Now to Germany, where the police are thoroughly sick of the eco-crazies. Let's look at the sounds this climate cultist makes when uh, police remove him from a blockade. <laughs> Oh, now to London, where a group of anti-Israeli protesters became agitated when they were told a Zionist was in their midst. <laughs> Get him, they say, Kosha. That's that's lovely, isn't it? And uh, still in the UK, our old maid Patrick Christie is a presenter on GB News, found himself in the middle of a pro-Palestinian mob. They weren't too friendly. There seems to be a new tactic where they just say, shame on you, shame on you. We, we saw them do this outside of McDonald's outlets, just uh, parents carrying their children out, having shame, shame, shame screamed at them. Uh, again, like the climate protesters, and often, the you know, it can be the same mob, they're not exactly endearing themselves to people who are undecided about this issue. Because I don't think the goal is persuasion, influencing opinions on your side and like the legitimate nuances in the debate. The goal is complete takeover, coercion, mm. shaming, all that. And you've seen it again with the, the BLM protesters, the McDonald's example you cited here, all these issues, it's sort of like showing force um, yeah. as a way to just exert basically what they're their view is and you know it's our way or the highway well it's going to be fascinating to see here in melbourne the the kids are going to be wagging school on thursday to have a pro-palestinian march and there's a uh, huge uproar around that about how that's going to impact the jewish kids at school the hostility the anti-semitism um so it'll be interesting to see how they behave during that student-led protest now let's check in on some of our youngest and brightest uh, seriously though, these lefties have been failed by their parents and the education system. Do you guys think Hamas is a terrorist organization? They are a political organization. Um, certain countries such as Canada, the UK, and the United States recognize them as terrorist organizations, but I think that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. I live in New York, so do we live do we live on stolen land here too? Yeah, it's also, we do. Uh, it's all a genocide that either was completed or People is look in at the me. Works. What's your favorite like Palestinian saying? Like from the river to the sea, Palestine would be Free. What, what would happen to all the Israelis? When... Um, they would use their second citizenship to whatever country they immigrated from and they would go back. But not everyone in Israel has second citizenship. But everyone came from somebody that came from some heritage outside of the Middle East. Like Yemen? Like Yemen, yes, exactly. So like Jews could go like back Ethiopia, there? Like all yeah. the Jews could go back to Ethiopia? Not all of the Jews can go back to one specific place. Well, Ethiopian Jews. Wherever they came from. What about uh, Libyan Jews? They can go, back Let's go back to Libya, right? They can stay in Palestine if they honour it as Palestinian territory. Basically, what they're advocating for would uh, see this slaughter of all Jews, but as is often the case with uh, frightfully ignorant people, they end their rant by calling for others to educate themselves. Do you feel bad about what happened on October 7th? So I can condemn any act of violence that harms people. Right. And when because they killed a bunch of people, like a bunch of people, like 1,400 people in one day. It's the largest killing since the Holocaust. What? It's the largest, the largest, killing, largest killing of Jews. Oh, okay. Largest killing of Jews yeah. since the Holocaust. Since the Holocaust, yeah. Okay. So you still want them to go back to Yemen, Jordan, like Lebanon, Syria? Well, aren't educating themselves. We're just following a rhetoric that's made in a family that's completely immoral and inhumane. But nobody wants to educate themselves. And I think if people picked up their phones and educate yourself. Now, those two were at least pleasant about their genocidal Marxist fantasies. This next lady needs to mind her manners. She starts off by asking, are you a Jew? 
She's going to smash his glasses into his face, bro. This girl needs to uh, calm down. But instead, we got more talk about Jews and phone smashing. Wow. Well, because I said something about Jews. Yes. Well, I said I support three Palestine because I said I support. Oh, no, bro, I'm you're lucky I don't smash your phone. You know. Stop no, recording no. me, please. Stop recording Everyone me. Everyone is recording you. Please, I think please stop recording off. me. Tell Can you please the bus. stop recording chill, 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 chill. I'm telling you, no, stop chill, recording me. Look at you pussy. I'm, I'm, I'll get off with it. Yo, what are you doing? Yo. Now, this next lefty losing, it has quite the imagination. Here she explains how the term good morning came about. So let's talk about where the word good morning originated from. Good morning. All right, so during slavery times, when the women used to mourn about their child being taken away and sold to a different slave master, or if one of the family members did something that resulted into them getting whipped or killed, most of these things used to happen in the evening time. So it was their way to make fun of the black slaves crying that night prior. So they would ask them, did you have a good morning? Did you have a good cry? And they would laugh about it. Y'all know what mourning mean. All they did was take the U off of it. So nobody would think about what it really originated from. It was really a mockery towards black slaves. Yes, a great story there. But despite the desperation of the American left, not everything is about slavery. Indeed, the earliest known use of the word good morning is in uh, the Middle English period. Uh, Oxford English Dictionary cites earliest evidence for good morning from uh, around 1450. So we're talking about some time before slavery in the US and before even the transatlantic slave trade began. In fact, there's 1,200 is uh, some examples of good morning there. But I just love the commitment to the cause, that we've just got to connect everything to the evils of slavery, even the phrase good morning. Commitment to the cause, and as you said, quite creative. On some level, you kind of have to admire it because it looks yes. like she just made the whole thing up out of thin air, put it on TikTok, <laughs> it went viral. Um, and, you know, why not? The more cynical among us would say watch the space because we have seen instances of dictionary.com and miriamwebster.com oh. change vernacular around different things. So I'm not saying they're going to do that for this because it's quite well cited, the entomology, but I would yeah. not be surprised if you started to see that. Happen. Well, we saw that happen with the OK symbol where it was a, a, as a joke proposed that it represents some sort of white supremacy secret symbol. And then that became mainstreamed when... Uh, idiots in the media decided that it was actually a real, a real thing and even the circle game was getting caught up in that. Now, finally, this last lefty's losing it. Uh, this one needs to be deported. She's a student at Durham College who is very proud of her masks and wants them to commit the October 7 attack again and again. I support Hamas. History is made that day. Very proud of my people. Very, very proud would love it if they would do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. No, they're not terrorists. I support every decision. And you know what? What they did was history. Very proud. History was made that day. Now, if she's born and bred in the West and she's a failure of multiculturalism, failure of her parents and the education system. If she's not a citizen, she should be sent back to wherever it is she emigrated from. Perhaps they share her genocidal values. But uh, here in the West, the majority still frown upon mass rape, torture and the deliberate slaughter of innocent civilians. Kosher, I mean, that's disturbing. I mean, it, it, you can see kids working their butts off to get to college, 
and to have those sort of views being normalised and, and to be bold enough to share that on social media proudly just tells you uh, what sort of a climate we've created in academia. We really have, and I think you hit the nail on the head when you say it's a failure of the culture, of parenting and the educational system. And it's really interesting because people like that come straight out of central casting. Like, mm. I don't know her specifically, but people like that are uh, the dream of admissions departments and they oh, yeah. like that. Tick industry. every box. That's right. And then you <laughs> see sort of the, the Frankenstein monster kind of turning on the, the creators of this cultural trend and uh, the education system and all of that. And it's really interesting. It's sad, but it's really interesting to see that fracturing happening now within that coalition of fringes or intersectionality and I think we're going to see more of it. Oh, we're going to see a lot more because the, the left is going to turn on itself. They do not share too many values other than their shared hate of uh, Western values and conservatives. That's it for Lefties Losing at Kosher Gator. Thank you so much for your time.